Today, I will talk about the integrity of restoration margin with direct composite restoration, and um, uh, especially about the um, uh, gap formation at the margin and also the uh, color matching between the restoration and tooth substance. So this is a very old critical cases you can see. Uh, of course, these uh, cast metal inlay restorations must be more than 50, nearly 50 years old restoration. And uh, this is a very old uh, restoration uh, it was uh, pressed uh, about uh, 45 years ago. And uh, uh, fortunately, I had an opportunity to take care of uh, Mrs. Fusayama recently. So, and uh, I, I believe that uh, this restoration was done by uh, my teacher, Dr. Takao Sayama, uh, when he, before he uh, retired from the position at PMDU. So as you can see, this uh, composite resin restoration here in the first molar, uh, it was uh, the material was the chemical cure type of adhesive as well as the chemical cure type of the composite resin. That's why the color matching was not good, but the sealing of the cavity was very well uh, performed and uh, lasted for nearly 50 years. And uh, of course, because uh, when I dry the surface, because of the mixing procedure of two pastes of the composite, uh, the surface uh, porosity can be seen, but it is not a serious problem in the clinical situation. At that time, we only had the chemical cure type of the material, and uh, in the case of chemical cure type of composite restoration, uh, the composite resin uh, conversion polymerization was considered to be started at the bottom of the cavity. Um, I, I believe that this uh, information is very well accepted in this group by your mimetic density uh, because of the little bit higher temperature of the human body. So that's why the shrinkage, the direction of the shrinkage stress is becoming from the top to the bottom. That's why the dentin bonding was also very well uh, protected. Because of that, the problem was considered to call to occur at the margin of the restoration like this. After that, the uh, light cure catalyst was uh, developed and because of the light cure catalyst, the conversion of the material became much better. So, however, there is a problem because the light is applied to on the top surface. That's why the polymerization starts from the surface. That was the direction of the shrinkage source is coming up from the bottom to the surface. That's why at the bottom, the gap is created. And nowadays, uh, we often discuss about this problem and uh, we discuss about the solution of this kind of problems. We have a very strong tool to uh, analyze this kind of phenomenon and that is the optical coherence tomography. As you see, you know very well, it can provide us a very excellent information on the inside of the tools and the restoration without any invasive approach. So uh, this is uh, uh, one of the uh, observations using the universal bone. Of course, uh, uh, this is uh, one of the representative universal bond, and it is very well accepted in the clinic in all over the world, and uh, it provided us a very good clinical performance. However, um, we should uh, recognize this kind of phenomenon occurs very frequently in the clinic. This is a cavity, and this is a composite resin. And this is a cavity wall and cavity floor here. And 
when we see this uh, OCT image, uh, if you see um, white line, so it indicates the presence of the gap or separation. Okay, we'll wait. <clears throat> now, like you started 10 seconds, then at this part, you can see the gap started. Excuse me. Now, during the right curling, the uh, bone separation already started at the bottom of the cavity. Of course, even after the right radiation stopped, the, uh, uh, the shrinkage stress remained in the um, bulk of the composite. That's why still the gap is uh, extended like this. Of course, in the clinical situation, we cannot see this. And uh, uh, even if we have this kind of uh, separation at the bottom of the cavity, uh, the patient may not feel uh, severe sensitivity because according to our cavity preparation technique, the bottom of the cavity, the dentin is consisted of the so-called uh, the inner layer of um, dentin caries, and that dentin is consisted of the dentinal tubules with the mineral deposit. That's why the bottom of the cavity, in most of the cases, they are not so much sensitive. That's why the patient does not feel the severe sensitivity. And also, as far as the cavity is very well sealed at these cavity walls, the restoration may not have any problem in the clinical situation. Anyhow, uh, we are not happy to have this kind of separation. I uh, often show this uh, schematic diagram. At first, we apply the bonding procedures, then I cure the uh, bonding resin, then we apply the probable composite resin, lining and light cure again. This uh, light curing to the probable composite resin is very important because this uh, light irradiation is also uh, improved the bonding at the bottom of this lining material. This uh, indirect irradiation to the bonding resin is also uh, already confirmed to be very effective to improve the bonding at the bottom. Then we can move on to uh, your favorite incremental healing technique. In this kind of uh, experiment, uh, we still continue to uh, observe the specimen even after one week. And after one week, we observe this kind of uh, gap at the margin of the one-step self-hatching adhesives. And after this, we section the specimen and observe under the confocal laser scanning microscope. Then we could confirm the separation at the enamel. This is probably because of a very um, weak etching effect of the one step self etching adhesive. Uh, this etching pattern may not. Uh, 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 be considered to be sufficient according to the old textbook of adhesive dentistry, but this surface, the very, very small irregularities based on the enamel crystals are very clearly exposed at the surface. This is strong enough for the bonding to the recent adhesives. So that's why we could obtain a very stable, stable bonding interface. And here, in the case of, uh, this is a cross-cut enamel prisms, and this is a parallel cut enamel prisms. Even with the parallel cut prisms, you can see some slight structure of the prisms, longitudinally cut enamel prisms, but uh, the surface structure is uh, seen like this, according to the very micro irregularity based on the uh, crystal of enamel. Because of this, the bone, the bone uh, interface is very stable. 